So now let's do this properly. The start of season three. So we aimed our sights high. Probably too damn high for what we're gonna be doing here. So again, this is the roster. At point guard, you viewed your last haw. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Now Yakupov XL now a senior and Texas Tech also a senior. Also a point guard, Wally McTally. So quite a few point guards, none of them are amazing at all, unfortunately. At shooting guard, Garbage, Bo Cruz, and Bend Over, who is also a senior. God help us when he leaves. At forward, Beefington Stromboli, Taco Bell, Raptor Jesus, and Slamming Jimmy. Gets me every time. Power forward, Tall Korea, Bis Nasty. And at center, Fishy Python with Gunther Steiner. Yeah, it's, it's a team. It's a team. We're like full Ottawa Senators mode. It's a team. Um, not a great one. Excuse me. Not a great one, but it's a team. We do have a little bit more shooting range, kind of. Tech has a bit more of a three-pointer, as does at Bendover. I know it's a little bit cut off, but... 73% job security. That's good to know. Positional breakdown. Again, we're okay there. Team select. Let's just put us on balanced to start the year. So recruitment-wise, in this particular database, again, are we setting our sights pretty damn high? Why, yes. Yes, we are. But we are going to just have to go for it. In reality, Marcus Perkins really should be our top our top guy uh, for the sole purpose if he's from Maine. But we might as well throw our name into the hat for Ben Lane. We will aim super high to start, and we'll take it from there. We got Borders who will send a letter to Bartholomew Doubleday. It's just incredible. Uh, Alan Cromartie. Again, we'll just see if we can make any headway with the best of the best. We got James Jeffrey and Baja Godfrey. And then a point guard, a lot of four-star point guards. We got Eric Gant out of Brooklyn. Kareem Hopper out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Rick Parks out of Poughkeepsie. And Adrian Rennick out of Niagara, New York. Those will be our initial targets. We will hope for the best. So playing NHL to send the code trade offer. Shrew for a first Mary Bird. Jesus. Yeah, I would have taken that too. All right. So that is pretty much it for week one. The top 25. Kansas does enter the season ranked number one, despite Villanova being the defending champs. You also got Kentucky, Michigan State, UConn, Virginia, Georgia Tech, Ohio State, Purdue, and Duke as your top 10. Quick scroll through of who else is involved. I'm not going to name everybody. Yeah, St. John's, though. In the top 25. So with that, I think we're ready to go. Again, we have a much, much easier schedule, including six games in a row. But again, there's no such thing as stamina, so who cares? But yeah, six games in a row against teams we should actually be able to beat. But yeah, we start off against a, a VMI squad, the Kidets. Uh, by the way, our ratings for this year are better. They are better. B minus is across the board. Not bad. So let's see here if we can win this first game. We do only by two. 71 to 69, but we are 1 0 on the season. Message center, athletic director. If we can win the home opener, was that the home opener? We did. Sweet. We won the home opener. So now we earned an upgrade point. So we could go up to weight room level one for strength, speed, and quickness. We could go study hall for offensive and defensive ability plus discipline or injuries. Injuries haven't been that much of a factor. Honestly, that's just general shooting ability. Let's go for study hall. Just general offensive and defensive ability 
I feel like it would be pretty helpful. We will unlock the study hall. The band upgrade happens on its own. Upgrade your school's fan support. Complete alumni and recruiting challenges to do that. So those upgrade, the better that we end up uh, actually doing. So not bad, though. So see, that's why I wanted that easier schedule. We can actually accomplish some of this shit. Uh, next up, the very next day, we take on Riverside. The University of California Riverside Highlanders, uh, who we are significantly better than. And we lose two by ten. Towson, Towson. I'm going to be Towson and turning if we lose to this fucking team. Jesus Christ, boys. Come on. No reason to lose. Thank you. We win by 12. We take on the very next day University of California Urban Anteaters. Who we are better than. And who we beat 85 to 72. So we're 3 and 1. We're taking on the Penguins. Of Youngstown State. The Penguins. Who we beat. Convincingly. And the final one. The Idaho State Bengals. Who we lose to. So we got those initial six games in a row. LOL. We only won four of them. Not ideal. Not ideal. Back to the recruitment database here. We haven't lost out on anybody yet. Ben Lane. We can send the care package to you. And we'll do that just to see if we can kind of get involved. Same with Borders. Same with Alan Cromarty. All of these are only costing three. We got Godfrey. James Jeffrey. Yeah, we're aiming our sights high, but we're hoping for the best. And the point guard. We have Gant. We have Hopper. It's going to cost six, but that's okay. We have Parks. We have Rennick. We'll see if we can actually make up any ground here on these guys. If not, we'll probably direct our attention to the three stars pretty fast. That is the hope. So four out of six wins against teams we were all better than, or at least on par with. It's not totally ideal. They're all home games too. I don't know how the hell that happened. Recruitment wise. So still no real movement for Ben Lane. Could conduct a phone interview. We really have to decide if those four stars are worth it at this stage. We did start to make ground on borders. There was nothing for Lane, though. We made ground with Cromarty. Not much. So we made up ground for everyone except Ben Lane. So we're going to take Ben Lane out. And we are going to target Marcus Perkins as this primary center upgrade, given that he is a home stater. Power forward, we'll keep talking to Borders. We can indeed conduct a phone interview. I already sent that letter of interest, so we're not gonna bother. A forward, Alan Cromarty. Conduct a phone interview with you as well. Shooting guards, Jeffrey. Godfrey. And a point guard. So again, we're really pushing. It's a bit of a risk, but we're really pushing because I feel like all we need is just one fucking good player who can help turn this program around. Because if we have him as a selling point for four years, we're in the money. Let's see if we can get to this weekend's game. Crash, I can't, but I want to. The Mercer Bears. This should be a dominating performance. We won by three. <laughs> Sounds about right. But we are winning games. 
Alright, so we haven't heard back yet. Give another couple of days. We'll see where we stand. We're still making improvement, though. I think we got one more day before it was officially a week. So this should be the day that we really start to hear back, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so we did make up some ground with Marcus Perkins. Let's hold off there for a minute. Still making up ground with borders. Again, the visits are a possibility, but it's a little bit rough. Uh, let's just go for it here. Perkins, offer you that scholarship. Borders, let's just hope for the best here. Offer you that scholarship. But forward, Cromarty. There's pretty much no way this works, but We'll give it a shot. Like I said, we're being a little bit more aggressive. I have zero expectations that this will actually work. But it is worth a shot. Because if we can only bring in two star guys anyway, we can just do that at the end of the season. You could argue it's more, uh, you know, worth fighting for the three star dudes, and you're probably right. But, man, if we can land a big fish, that changes everything. But we only have 24 points left, so that's kind of our shot in the dark right now to really see who's actually interested. We take on the Bulldogs of Gardner-Webb. Decent team. And we lose 91-50. to So we actually played a decent team for once and immediately got murdered. Central Michigan. We lose by four. Son of a... Bitch, boys. The Radford Highlanders. We win. We're 6-4 and four despite this supposedly easier schedule. And then the Sacramento State Hornets. We win that as well. Thankfully. Still pretty rough, though. 7-4. and four. Not what I was hoping for to start the season. It is at least a winning record, though. And we have that going for us. So... At center, not much moving on Perkins. Still not that much moving on Borders. Cromarty still on very low. All right, so for the four stars, it's pretty much it. For the three stars, let's be honest, let's start the move for Doubleday. Let's start the move. For Mr. Doubleday. We'll also go for Gallery here, who has some built-in interest for us at forward. At guard. I mean, Clinton is literally from Maine. This should be easy. And then a point guard, obviously, Manfred Kaufman. Will be the next guy that we target. So we are a week out. Whole lot of time off for the boys now. Whole lot of time off. Have a lovely holiday break, gentlemen, because I think we're, yeah, we're coming back the day after Christmas. Okay, so at center, we do have some improvement for Perk. Not much. We'll officially offer him a scholarship. A power forward, we have some improvement for Doubleday. See if we can get more off of a scholarship offer. A forward, improvement for Gallery. We'll offer him a deal too. At guard, we get improvement for Clinton. And at point guard, Kaufman. 
also some improvement it's just a matter of how much just a matter of how much let's sim another week I really don't like our chances here but we just need one one high-end dude can turn this entire program around so at center no real improvement for Perkins That's a bit rough. There was some improvement from Doubleday. Gallery is up to medium. Which is solid. We will officially offer Gallery the sponsorship if I didn't already. I feel like I did. Maybe he just outright rejected it. Shooting guard. Clinton's up a little bit. Uh, the interest is still very low though. High interest at this stage, nobody, or at least highest. High interest, nobody. Medium interest, we get one dude, that's gallery. We're kind of stuck fighting for who we're fighting for at this stage. That off-season recruitment's going to be pretty damn important for us. All right, we take on the Jaspers, and we take on Dartmouth the day after. We beat the Jaspers by two. What will happen against Dartmouth? We lose by four. Jesus Christ, eight and five. That is frankly embarrassing, given that strength of schedule. <laughs> that is pretty goddamn embarrassing. So, I wouldn't even say we're still in the mix for people. We really have to seal the deal with Brian Gallery. We really do. But we don't have that many points left. So, weird spot to be in. Very weird spot to be in. Let's go to January 1st. I just seen this team play these stretch of games and not wanting to jump on board. Yeah, they're all at home, at least there's no travel. It is our first conference game of the year. We need a win. Please. Thank you. It's all down to these conference games now, though. This is what's important. This is what is important. So. Nobody on our short list has commit, you know, committed anywhere yet, so we might. Still have a chance. We'll continue to wait it out. Albany. They've been a tough opponent for us. And we lose by 10 on the road. Stony Brook. We lose at home by 10. I don't have a great feeling about my ability to turn a team around right now. I can't say I do. We got Hartford coming up in a week. We are one and two in conference play so far, which is not what I had in mind. At all. We lost to Hartford by three. We're one and three in conference play. This team is trash. <laughs> I don't think I can turn them around at this stage. I really don't. Hi, Calm, what's up? Oh, man. This is, uh... This is rough. This is real rough. And recruitment-wise, it's all the same info for now. 
Binghamton and Vermont this week. We lose to Binghamton. We're fu yeah, we're fucked. Vermont, we lose five in a row. It's a 30-year dynasty, and it might take the full 30. We lose to Boston University as well. We finally snap a six-game losing streak by beating Stony Brook. My god. Second bottom in the conference as BU and New Hampshire are both crushing it right now. Rennick is off to Arkansas. Some people are starting to sign. To the surprise of nobody. This has been a disaster. An outright disaster. We go to February 1st. And we get another win back to back. We're now back to 500. At 11 and 11. And the four star Borders is gone. Four star Cromartie went to Michigan. Well, our more aggressive approach might have paid off if the team was better. We have New Hampshire. We lose. Hartford. We lose. Vermont. We lose. New Hampshire again. We lose. Albany. We win. Two games left, thank God. Oh, this team. Just brutal. Just brutal. We got Binghamton and BU to round out the season. Goodness gracious. Brent doesn't make a difference. We have an identical record to what we had last year. We lose to Binghamton. Actually, now it's a little bit worse. <laughs> now it's a little bit worse. Well, needless to say, I expect us to be the last seed in terms of the conference uh, tournament. Doubleday ended up signing elsewhere. We're just pretty much in a boatload of trouble. That more aggressive strategy did not pay off because this team has absolutely blown it, which means I'm never going to customize the schedule again because it's a waste of time. Unless we want to make it more difficult. And we lose to BU. So. Top 25. Tar Heels, number one in the nation. You got the defending champs in Villanova. Maryland, Michigan State, Stanford, Nebraska, Arizona. Clemson, Texas, and Minnesota. As your top ten. Conference standings, we finish second bottom just above Baltimore. Hartford went 14 and 2, as did Boston University. In terms of the stats, I mean what fucking difference does it make? But we can look at our stats. Uh, Steiner, 20 points a game. Get over. It's nasty, but yeah. I mean li we literally have a center. We have a center and a half decent guard, and the guard's about to graduate. Brutal. We literally have a half decent center. And that is it. So with that, conference tournament, we get to play Baltimore. The winner plays number one Hartford. 
We're in the wild card first round. Cool. Well, boys, you've been trash all season long. Let's, uh... Oh, good, and slamming Jimmy's hurt. Let's reorganize here. Let's reorganize and we'll see who actually gets to play and who doesn't. Because there is a chance that I am just going to go with uh, not a completely different lineup, but we might go NHL style here and really mix it up. So again, those are our only two centers, so Python is where he is. Uh, we don't really have a better option of power forward either. Uh, we can run... Let's go with Beefington Stromboli. He's a slasher as opposed to a passer scorer. So we'll see if that helps him out at all. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, over will obviously be the starting guard. And a point guard, Texas Tech can suck it. But in fairness, all of our point guards are pretty bad. We're going to go with You've Yeed Your Last Haw as our starting point guard for this game out of uh, pure desperation. Pure desperation. Is that is where we stand right now. In a position of pure, unadulterated desperation. There we go. That is the second. Daniel, what's going on? All right, let's see what happens. I mean, it, it literally can't be any worse. This has been our worst season yet, as surprising as that is. It is a Baltimore. It is Baltimore. <sighs> to see if we can move on and play the number one seed in the conference, Hartford, and right now it's not looking good. It's not looking good. We battled back a bit, and then they went on a 12-point run, and that's it. We lose to Baltimore, 73-60. to And again, we are out after one game. I don't know what the hell went wrong this year. Was it the balanced approach? Was it our strategy? Like, what was it? But holy shit, did this team suck. Damn it.